Hey everyone, my name is Carla. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. For those who don't know, I'm currently trying to cycle all the way from Vancouver, Canada to Patagonia in Argentina. You can probably tell by the music in the background that I am currently in Medellin, Colombia, which means that I just crossed from Panama to Colombia. You're probably familiar with it, but for those who don't know, this is not your typical border crossing. It's the infamous Darien Gap one of the most dangerous places on earth. This video is gonna be a bit different from my usual content, mainly because this is a very complex and sensitive topic and I wanna make sure I cover it in the best way possible. The last thing I wanna do with it is to treat it lightly. It may also be a bit of a longer video, mainly because I wanna do my best uh, to provide you with some background about this part of the world. So if you feel like you wanna skip ahead to my crossing, I will make sure to separate it in chapters so you can use the progress bar down below. Okay, before we dive into the topic, I just want to take a minute to acknowledge how lucky and privileged I am for choosing to take this journey. Traveling has made me increasingly aware of the privilege I have for having the passport I have. I am choosing to be here, I am choosing to cycle, I am choosing to cross this part of the world. Um, if I ever get tired, if I don't want to do this anymore, I can just fly home. This is not the case for the thousands of people who have to cross this border in search for a better life. This is something I've been reflecting on lately, something I see every day throughout my travels, um, but something that becomes even more poignant in this part of the world. My intention with this video is not to downplay the horrific stories of those migrants who cross the Darien Gap. Their experiences are filled with dangers, challenges, and hardships. Instead, my goal is to shine a light on the history, the background, and the dire circumstances surrounding this remote stretch of land. Of course, I'm not an expert on this topic, and it's a very, very complex issue, so I won't be able to cover everything. I've done a lot of research, but if I do get something wrong, please feel free to correct me in the comments. I will link the resources I used for this video down below if anyone is interested. And I really do recommend listening to some of the podcasts or reading some of the articles I will be linking because it's a very, very interesting topic. Let's begin by understanding the bigger picture. The Pan American Highway is a vast network of roads and highways that spans 14 countries in North, Central and South America. It stretches for over 48,000 kilometers or 30,000 miles. From Prudhoe Bay, Alaska in the United States to Ushuaia, Argentina, at the southern tip of South America, making it the longest road network in the world. The highway passes through various capital cities, serving as a vital transportation artery for both economic and cultural exchange. Construction began in the 1930s and continued through several decades with sections completed independently by individual countries. Despite its vast length and scope, the Pan American Highway is not entirely continuous. There is a 97 kilometer gap called the Darien Gap, El Tapón de Darien in Spanish, in which no road or bridge connects North, Central and South America. This wild, lawless stretch separating Panama and Colombia is considered to be one of the most perilous places on Earth. But the Darien Gap is more than just a geographical obstacle. Through the Darien, the Darien Gap, gap wild, along the border between South Colombia America, and Panama, it is one of the Panama's most dangerous migration routes. A treacherous uh, area where nature is decaying and the elements are brutal. It's also a deeply complex and poignant symbol of migration. For many, this stretch of land represents a life-altering journey a path to seek refuge, opportunity, and a better future. When crossing it, migrants face not only the natural dangers of the jungle, such as lethal snakes, slimy rocks, erratic riverbeds, and tropical diseases, but also the ever-present threat of human exploitation. Smugglers and drug traffickers operate in these remote regions, posing grave risks to those attempting to cross. According to the United Nations, more than 330,000 people have crossed the Darien Gap so far this year. This is the highest number ever recorded in a single year. And shockingly, one out of every five of these travelers is a child. At this point, you're probably wondering, why isn't the gap fixed yet? The most obvious reason is the economic cost, but there's way more to it. The Darien Gap is an ecological gem often consider it as one of the lungs of the planet. It produces oxygen, stores carbon, 
and shelters unique plant and animal species found nowhere else on Earth. Building roads or bridges through this region could lead to deforestation and habitat destruction, putting these unique ecosystems at risk. Also, the Darien Gap acts as a natural barrier against the spread of tropical diseases. It is also very important to recognize the rights and cultures of the indigenous communities living in the Darien Gap. Communities such as the Embera, Wunan, Wunan and Guna have thrived here for generations, living in harmony with nature. Construction projects could potentially disrupt their lives, displace them from their ancestral lands and undermine their cultural heritage. Okay, so I hope I've provided you with a good understanding of the background and complexities that surround this part of the world. Now, let me share with you how I personally tackled the challenge of crossing it. Travelers embarking on journeys like mine, I mean, going from North America to South America or the other way around, often use various ways of avoiding this obstacle. Some people fly, there's other who sail and visit the San Blas Islands, which was initially the way I had planned, and others even kayak. Considering my budget and my time constraints, for me, the best option was to do it using little lunches, which is something that a lot of locals do. This would not have been possible without the help of Cameron Williams, a cyclist from Australia who is traveling from Alaska to Argentina on a tandem bicycle, with the rear seat occupied by people he meets along the way. He has compiled a comprehensive guide on how to undertake this route. This guide, of course, will also be linked in the description. After visiting Panama City, I slowly made my way up to Puerto Cartí. This is where the journey starts, and the first step was finding a lancha to take me to Puerto Valdía. I had heard this could take from a few hours up to even five days, so I didn't know what to expect, but I was ready for everything. I got extremely lucky, because in less than an hour, Joselito was carefully placing my bike on his lancha. Even though his boat was extremely fast, this journey can take up to nine hours. I think our journey, rain and all, took about eight hours. At some point, we got stuck in the coral reef. And along the way, we stopped in several islands to get some goods or new passengers. When I set out on this trip, I had dreamt of sailing through the captivating San Blas Islands as a route from Panama to Colombia. While our boat wasn't a sailing boat, the journey was equally mesmerizing. The tiny islands we passed were like something out of a fairy tale. And the most beautiful part was getting to visit the villages and meet the local people who live there. Puerto Valdía was our first stop. Here is where we got our exit stamps from Panama. We changed boats and we were off to Colombia. After one more hour, we were officially in Colombia, ready to get our entry stamps. No road reaches this area, so I still had one ferry left. 
but I decided to stay for one night in Caburgana. There I met Nelson and Mateo, and I spent the rest of the afternoon playing with them, jumping off the pier and snorkeling. Everyone recommended one hostel as the cheapest and coolest one, so there I went. Ready to finish my journey the next day. On the second day, I hopped on a ferry that would take me from Capurgana all the way to Turbo, Colombia. Crossing the Darien Gap by boat left me with mixed emotions. It's hard to wrap my head around the fact that the same breathtaking beauty that surrounds me can also be the backdrop to the darkest days in the lives of those who dare to cross it in search of a better life. And that's it. That was my crossing from Panama to Colombia. I hope you liked the video, you found it informational or even useful if you're planning on doing the same crossing. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for coming with me, and I'll see you very soon.